Welcome to King for the Day, your racing's dictator. I think it's very vexed the whip because obviously it's hideous seeing people thrashing horses. It's simply hideous. We had a harder whips in those days and I was never had any well, spirit marking a horse. You're a lawyer, mate. Right? You're in a position where it's obvious to any fool that you're going to tell a porky. Well, the trouble about clerks, of course, is, is they're so inconsistent. There's some very, very good clerks and there's some very moderate ones. The owners are the backbone of racing. We've no owners, we've got no horses. What changes and reforms would you introduce? You know when the burglary is going to occur. So all you've got to do is watch the race. If you think something's not trying, you want somebody to see it when it's pulled up, see how hard it's blowing. John Frankham, seven times champion national hunt jockey, riding 1,138 winners. Took up training for 18 months before joining the Channel 4 broadcasting team for over 20 years, winning the Royal Television Society Best Sports Pundit in 2004. Master builder, best-selling author, completing 25 novels with racing themes and recently succeeded Lord Oatsy as president of the Injured Jockeys Fund. John, welcome to King for the Day, your racing's dictator. What changes and reforms would you introduce? Uh, Mac, I think I'll deal with the big issues first. The last three uh, chairmen of the BHA have all come in saying they were going to deal with the uh, levy, get the, the funding sorted out, and they've all left having failed to do so. Um, I'd be more inclined to be thinking of coming at it from a different angle and I would take on somebody like Vaughan Ashdown or John Brown, two former chairmen of Corals and William Hill, and say, come on board with us. We're going to start buying our own betting shops, build up a small chain of 20, so that that way they've got a completely different view of what the bookmakers are facing. At the moment, racing is very much like um, uh, a, a wealthy child that gets an allowance. It doesn't actually do anything for its, its money. It gets given um, £70 million, pounds, I think, this year um, for not doing very much other than putting on racing, of course. Um, if they owned 20 of their own betting shops, they would all of a sudden be able to say, actually, this is really hard work. How lucky are we to be getting £70 million? Pounds? Or they'd be saying, hang on, we're making you know, a million pounds or two million pounds a year out of these shops. We ought to be getting a little bit more. They should be running their online betting. So they're more self-funding and more aware of what's going on, not just standing back and receiving the money. That way, I think they get more, um, they'll, they'll work better with the bookmakers who at the moment are doing all the funding. But how would more money come to racing through this education policy that you want to pursue? Uh, well, it, well it, uh, because you'd like to think that if you've got 20 betting shops, um, they would, they'd be giving you a better return on your money than having nothing at the moment. Racing doesn't actually you know, go out and earn any money for itself. It's, God knows how much money it's got from the levy over the last 30, 40 years. I mean, billions of pounds. And what have they got to show for it? You know, they've, you know most of the race courses are getting interest-free loans. You know, it should have something or should have had something a long time ago that's actually producing an income. Racing, as you say, has been subsidised all, all along with a, an investment, given an investment, a forced levy from bookmakers towards it. But I just don't see how you're thinking you're going to boost the levy, get more money into racing, it just by not. educating the rulers of racing. I don't, uh, may, maybe it doesn't, but I think it, they'll be able to look back and say, it's like, like a kid, suddenly your dad gives you £100 every week and you spend £100 every week, racing's done that pretty much for, you know, forever, suddenly you've got to say, actually, let's start saving a little bit of this. We won't spend it all on money, all on um, prize money. We'll start investing it, making it give us a return. That way, you'll be in a better position to judge the people that are actually giving you the money. Looking into this influx of money that you hope would come into racing, how would you spend it? You wouldn't spend it on, on prize money, or would you? Or would you invest in the future training of youngsters or horses looking after their welfare? How would you spend the increased money that you hope to get? Um, listen, most, most of the um, problems within racing, we've, we tend to forget the people that are the backbone of the racing, which are the owners. They're the people that put the money in. So it's right that there should be plenty of prize money. And ultimately, you would like to think that if you've got 
20 of your own betting shops, it will either say to you, let's get rid of them, how lucky are we because we're getting the levy every year off the bookmakers, or they'll say, hang on, let's build this up, let's build our internet um, site up so that you've got a better revenue stream, which hopefully will be, allow you to give more money um, to owners. You make the right point. Owners are the backbone of racing, and they've fallen by about 10% in the recession, 10% less owners now than there were four or five years ago. But if you double prize money, what's that going to do? There's still too many horses, too much racing going on. What help would that be just by giving more money to the owners? Well, it wouldn't, but what, it, what you do is once you've started getting more money, and I've always said it, they, we've got Race Course Holdings Trust, which own the majority of the good race courses, but racing should be looking to buy the likes of Lingfield Park, Wolverhampton, and start having its own race courses, you know, so, so that you're on a much better footing. At the moment, they've got all the picture rights, um, uh, which, is, which is fantastic. Which is a new innovation. They it's a new, in a new yeah. innovation, and they are key to racing's finances. Don't get me wrong about that. Uh, so if you owned your own betting shops, you would be immediately be in a much stronger position when it comes to negotiate. William Hill say, we don't want to pay for your pictures. That's absolutely fine. We've got a betting shop in Manchester. It will be flooded the second you turn the pictures off in your shop. So that's, a, that's another plus side to it. And you talk about what will actually happen to racing if the levy doesn't go up, if the funding doesn't go up. Do you envisage the apocalypse happening and that Lambourne and Newmarket could be ghost towns in five or ten years no. unless something's done? No, I don't think so at all. I just think it's looking to the future um, so that you're not reliant on, like your mum and dad, giving you £100 every week. Let's start earning some of our own money. I think they'd feel better about themselves. Um, and start doing something intelligent with the money. Looking to a further afield, information for punters. What more can racing do? And, and punters know more now than they ever used to know. But what more could they do? What suggestions have you got? Uh, well, the, the punters are very well served at the moment. I think the, the, the way that we need to um, go is get more appreciation of the horse itself. It's great that quite a few race courses have... Um, two or three race horses at the races for people to look at. I'd be, would be sticking one indoors at every race course so could people get up to them. Um, I'd take four um, people, most people have never met a trainer or a jockey in their life. I'd take four people who've come racing um, at random, take them into the paddock, introduce them to a trainer, jockey, make them feel more, you've got to get them up close to the horses. This country has been built on the back of the effort that horses have put into it. They, you know, a hundred years ago, you saw a horse everywhere. They were ploughing the fields, they were pulling the milk carts, they were pulling lorries with coal, they did everything. People saw horses every day. Most people don't get up close to horses. They don't have that appreciation of what amazing animals they are, their strength, their intelligence. They're just, you know, it, that's the side that we've got to go down. Um, and I think maybe if we started weighing them, um, had a weighing machine which was close enough for people to come and look at. It would probably actually help punters, but it would also give something, it would give a focal point um, that people going racing could go in and see them. And quite interested. I, I often look at horses and think I'll be interested to know how much that two year old weighs, or, you know, is it heavier now it's a three year old? So there's, I think that's something that would, you know, add to racing. That's what they do in Japan. The way horses, the weights come out, and obviously when you look back down the horses' records, you can see when it won. I know their muscles change and age and all that, but these are factors that is up to the punters to interpret. Yeah, I think it's just the just the physical fact of watching them stand on scales and you know allowing people to get close to them. I mean, the idea of having a crowd either side of a finishing line, you know, it, there, there there are lots of different things that racing could do to. Um, just add to a little bit of tension. Somebody said a little while ago, you know, in this day of technology, you know, there shouldn't be any need for a photo finish. But in many ways, a photo finish is quite exciting. You've got that suspense. It's so quick now. In the old days, it is. you could be beaten a neck in the old days. You still said just a bit of hope, maybe, just maybe. Yeah, but it's but part of the it, excitement. It just fleshes up, doesn't it? I mean, te I love tennis now. You know, you get it with the cricket. Tennis, you get the magic eye. Was the ball in or out? Did it win? Didn't it win? You know, it's, no, it's, it's a good thing. Go back to the appreciation of horses. Over at Longchamp, for instance, 
they have ponies in front of, of front of the stands and about 20 of them walking around with an adult holding them with kids on top who've probably never sat on a pony horse in their lives. You started in the Jim Carners and everything like that. Isn't it the way to get younger people really interested? Have them at the races. Come racing. Dress them up as jockeys. Put well, them on a yes, horse. Yes, yeah. I'd love, love to see you on a horse. Well, yeah, but, now, the RSPC, you would say, but the RSPCA would complain. Now, you would, you would say, oh, rubbish. Yeah. But you see, um, the other day in London, I saw um, Boris Johnson. They got him yes. on board. I mean, look desperate. But they heaved him on they, board. But they, they got yes, him, got him yes, on board. Yes, yes. How many people would go home from the racing if they'd been put on a horse saying, mm. God, you can't believe what so I've So you think today. not just kids on little ponies? And mums and dads as well. Yeah, but, just get that... But because then health and safety, what would they say? But you health, can't, health, you can't, health, you can't, health you can't and safety them. is an excuse for everybody. I it's know. it's a cheap way out. So let's put that to one side. Mm. How many people go racing and go and stand down by the first flight of hurdles or the first fence? You cannot appreciate how much more you get out of your day's racing if you see what's involved for the horses and the job. And the sound. The sound, the speed, it, yes. you know, it's, it's just a completely different feeling. And a lot of people miss out when they go racing. Yeah, but who's going to pay for these ponies and these horses that the oh, Mayor of London of sits on? Come out of the levy. So we go, the money we pay to race courses, they'd have to send in receipts of these. It's just to make people more aware of what's going no, on. We know the benefits, think, but who's yeah. paying for it? That's the difference. It, but it's, you, you know, most of the big festivals, people um, are falling over themselves to go. In some cases, there's too many people who are racing and it, it's not comfortable, you know, if you're a punter and you've paid your money to get in. You know, if you go to Leicester on a Monday, I'm not picking Leicester out for any particular reason, and, you know, you've got six races here, who would want to go and watch most of the horses running? It's like, do I want to go and watch, you know, the under-11 team playing at Lambourne? If you weren't going to go and pay, watch Wayne Rooney play on a Saturday afternoon, then you want to pay your money, you want to go. So there's got to be something else there for people to go to see. There's got to be more interest. You've got to get them involved and say, oh, let's go and have a look, see if there are any youngsters or things. You've got, you've got to get people more aware and more appreciative of the animals that are doing the racing. You know and I know, they'll go in and they'll say whatever they think they need to say to keep the race or to get the race. So let's have a look at it, head on, side on, the same people doing it every day. That keeps the race that day.